And then you may start. Um, next slide, please, Venable. Auspicious greetings, everyone. Welcome to this month. Thank Buddha, it's Friday. I'm so pleased to see everyone here for an hour of Dharma and Community Connections. This is our first sessions for 2024, as Venerable mentions. My name is Cindy, and I will be your moderator for tonight. Next slide, please. Tonight, we have three wonderful guest speakers with us. We have Venerable Miao Zhang, Venerable Miao Yi, and Venerable Zhe Qing. They are based here at the Fo Guan Shan Shi Fang Temple here in San Diego. Venerables will be sharing with us the upcoming celebration of Lunar New Year here in San Diego and around the world. Also, Venerable will be sharing with us the connections between Buddhism and Chinese culture and much more. I just want to share a few housekeeping announcements with everyone before we start. When our venerables, our guest speakers are finished with their sharing and it is time for us to share our thoughts, our comments or ask questions. For those who are here at the temple, please kindly go to the designated hot seats to share your comments or ask questions. And also for those who are on Zoom, make sure to unmute yourself before you're sharing. Also, please do share your name so that we know who you are. And uh, with no further ado, <laughs> uh, help me and welcome our venerables to share with us for tonight, Venerable Mel Zhang, Venerable Mel Yi, and Venerable Zhe Qin. Thank you. Why is it not showing? Please tell me. And uh, auspicious greeting to everyone. My, can you hear me at the back? No. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Okay. Yeah, better? All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Auspicious greeting. And it's, uh, we say Ji Xiang in Mandarin means auspicious greeting. So um, this is my first time doing a presentation in San Diego, uh, Sivan Temple. So, okay. On and off. Okay. All right. So, to prepare. Can I? Can I just continue? All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So, to prepare tonight's sharing, I was thinking maybe since this is year of dragon, I should make a phone call to my friends. So I ring up someone, my buddy friends, dragon, and little did I know, the dragon has a very unique way of answering the phone. So he say, hello, water speaking. So now you know where the waters come from this day. And who dumps the water? All right. So 
for today's topic. Um, all right. Okay, let's start with. Okay, back to the team tonight, talking about Luna's New Year. I would like to start with some frequent asked questions about the Luna New Year. So, um, hopefully, my answer and sharing uh, will in give you some ideas about what Luna New Year is, and especially the enduring significance and underlying cultural essence. So, at the first slide. Luna New Year, also known as Spring Festival. So we call it Chun Jie, and it marks the arrival of springs. And as we know, after months of cold, the earth is finally revived by the warm and gentle spring breeze. So flower blossoms, birds chirping, and natural environments back to life. And it's a good um, time and opportunity to start anew. So next questions will be, how long is a Lunar New Year celebrations? Anyone would like to take a guess? How many days? Three. Three? Uh-huh. Two weeks. Two weeks? Almost same. Ten? Three weeks, wow. Can we have such a long holiday? <laughs> All right. So this, yeah, this festival lasts for 15 days, marking the beginning, new beginning, and extend through the Lantern Festival on the 15 days of the lunar calendar. And this considered to be the most uh, important celebrations of each year as family and friends all get together to celebrate. And it's a very precious family reunion days of the year as well. Mm -hmm. So in Fogong San Monastery, uh, during this period of time, it's also considered um, a very peak season in the temple. So you can uh, you can notice that monastics and volunteers start um, doing some big cleaning, stocking up some food, ingredients, getting ready uh, for the preparations of um, the new year. So especially you will see the iconic decorations. So you will see red lanterns will be hung around and with name on it. Hmm? So what is the significance of this peace lantern with names? You haven't seen it here, but slowly you will see as we have the, um, what is it? Lantern painting on this coming Saturday. Mm -hmm. And slowly we'll have this red lantern to be hung around the temple as well. So in temple, I mean, what is that lantern, the red piece lantern festival was in itself? Hmm? Christmas? Making wishes, yeah. So light lanterns is a universal symbol of hopes, illuminations, and enlightenment. So especially so in Buddhism. So as the Buddhist saying goes, a single light can dispel the darkness of a thousand years. So light counteracts all darkness. At the beginning of the year, as we join, as everyone of us join the Peace Lantern service, we offer the lights in front of the Buddha. It's akin to lighting up year ahead. So bringing about a year filled with good health, wealth, and peace. So anyone that haven't registered, for the lantern, <laughs> MSL. Do come to the temple building. All right, next we'll have. Oh, there are several, there are also frequent questions asked 
Why is the Lunar New Year heavily associated with red colors? Red, you can see red go around. Why? Hmm? Because red is a forever trending color. <laughs> well, red is an auspicious color in most of the Asian country. It symbolizes good luck, happiness, and prosperity. And also, we will see firecrackers, lions, and dragon dance during the um, Chinese New Year as well. Well, to answer all these questions, Banner Miao Zhang <laughs> found gems of videos that basically holds all the answers to these <laughs> questions. So as we know, video does the storytelling gigs way better than me as a narrator. So without further ado, let's hit that play button. <laughs> Chinese New Year is a major celebration in Chinese culture. This holiday marks the beginning of the new year in the ancient lunar calendar that is based upon the moon cycles. Full of customs and traditions, the origins of Chinese New Year contain a number of legends and folk tales. One such legend circles around a terrifying creature called Nian. This is where our story begins. A long time ago, there existed a quiet village. The villagers lived simple, peaceful lives and were generally quite happy. Things would change, however, on the eve of the Lunar New Year, as the villagers began their preparations to hide from what was soon to come. High in the mountains lived a horrible demon creature called Nian. This monster resembled a lion with sharp horns and menacing teeth. Throughout the year, he would sleep soundly until the Lunar New Year arrived, when he would descend upon the village. Nian would devour crops, gobble up livestock, and any child it found would disappear. In fear, the villagers would lock up their homes and hide until Nian had passed. One year, as the fateful day approached, an old beggar entered the village. Seeing everyone locking up their homes, he asked if anyone was willing to offer him a place to stay. The villagers, however, were too concerned with protecting themselves that they paid no attention to the old man. An old woman from the east side of the village saw the poor man. She brought him some food and explained why everyone was in such a panic. She pleaded with the beggar to leave as soon as possible, or else he may suffer a terrible fate. He requested that if she offered him a place to stay for the night, he would reward her by banishing the evil creature. Not convinced, she continued to plead with the man, but in the end, since she feared being left out when Nian arrived, she had no choice but to agree to his proposal. Once midnight arrived, so did Nian. Normally, the village remained completely silent and dark. However, this year, there was something different. At one end of the village, Nian could see lights in the In the distance. Approaching cautiously, Nian drew closer to the home. Once Nian arrived, it found the home of the old woman had been covered with red papers, and bright light was coming from inside. It began to tremble and growl in fear. Enraged by such unusual and irritating things, Nian charged the front door, but was met by a barrage of loud, intimidating cracks and flashes, stopping Nian in his tracks. Through the smoke, the old man emerged in a bright red gown, who was loudly beating a drum and roaring with laughter at how scared Nian appeared. Overcome with fear, Nian fled away through the dark night. The next day, the villagers emerged from their locked homes and were surprised to discover the village remained untouched. At this moment, the old woman remembered the message from the beggar. She beckoned to the other villagers to examine her home to see what the old man had done to save their village. They were interested to see all of the red papers, lanterns, and burnt bamboo, the cause of the cracking sound and inspiration for modern day firecrackers. They were quickly enlightened by the fact that these seemingly simple objects had been the same that had scared away Nian and kept their village safe. To celebrate their triumph over the beast, the villagers donned similar bright red outfits and visited neighbors to share the joy. The news quickly spread, and soon after, Nian was no longer a threat to anyone. As the years passed, these traditions were formed, and the fear that the new year had once caused was replaced with excitement and celebration, and everyone would stay up late to welcome the new year. We wish everyone a very happy Chinese New Year, and we hope that it will be full of prosperity and happiness for all. Mm. 
Chinese. All right, we have unwrapped the mystery and the interesting from the Kazuka New Year. Mm -hmm. So, the Kazuka New Year is the Chinese New Year. Mm -hmm. So, let's explore further. Reunion dinner on Luna Eve. So, as I recall, during the New Year Eve, um, when I was young, uncles and aunts together with their kids will visit us. As grandpa and ma grandma were still living with us, they will also bring various kind of delicious foods and snacks to have a reunion dinner with grandpa and grandma. So we call this night as Tu Xi, New Year Eve. So what do we do during the night? Eat. <laughs> of course, not only eat. So this is a time we spend on with many meaningful sharings, experience, sharing our experiences, and paying respect and show gratitude to the elderly in our family. I still remember we tend to sit nearby around our grandparents side by side, sharing our growth of the years, studies, and any things that make them feel happy. Things that we talk about a lot, mainly about our childhood memories, dishes that they cook, they prepare, and how they care for us, those happy and sometimes emotions moments, and how supportive they were, they were as a refuge and a family that we can rely and trust. So all above are sense of appreciation and warm respect that our family treasure and virtues that was within to preserve. Oh, of course, watching the spring festival gala performance. I mean, this is very like famous in the Chinese uh, TV shows every year. So we stay up late during the night and certainly accompanying with food, snacks, and drinks. So then the nights will carry on, usually with also playing with freckles, um, fireworks, and as everyone wait for the arrival of the new year. So next, red envelopes. As we get up for the new year, the kids are buzzing with excitement. You know why? <laughs> yeah, the red envelopes. So the parents and the elders in the family will start handing out the, this red packet as well as as a well wishes and scholarship to the children which have cash inside, real money, cash. But there's a twist these days, you know, with a digital red packet. <laughs> so like WeChat, WhatsApp and Line, you can just tap away, then your well wishes and scholarship can be sent instantly. Ding. <laughs> right. No one's tried it before? Like you haven't received any of it? <laughs> Marisa, you have a WeChat account? I know, no, but my friends are finally for me to give them but I don't want to get married, you switch it. <laughs> yeah, it switches once you're like an adult in marriage. Like you're giving them the <laughs> So you end up giving up oh, and down. Yeah, both. <laughs> All right, next, food. What are the must eat food? What are the must eat treats on Luna New Year? Anyone of you can name it? Hmm? Um, no one? Sorry? The turtle cake, I see. Yeah, turtle cake. There's the yearly cake or the rice cake. Yeah, the rice cake. The tangerines, um, tangerines or mandarins. Mochi. Yeah. Mochi. I know the rice balls for sure. But mochi rice ball. Oh, mochi stick rice balls is like the whole thing. Uh, right, Mo yeah, right. Tang yuan. Tang yuan, yeah. So it's, it's, yuan. it's like a, like a, a shape, like a yeah. little ball. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, or sometimes yeah. just the plain one oh, that yeah, you can yeah. cook with. Yeah. Fruits. So we call that juice, the fruits, the tangerines. And we call it juice. It means like, as we know, like we greet each other, 
it sounds like uh, ascending uh, like a good fortune, auspiciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, that's Nian Gao. You know, the, what is it? The sticky, yeah, the sticky rice cake, Nian Gao. Nian Gao means like, um, year cake. I, not a year cake. It's like to bring a fortune, I'll say a fortune cake that actually wishing you to get like promoted for your coming years, getting higher and higher growth progress. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, what else do we have? Tang Yuan, the little bowl, and all these popular tricks enjoy during this festive seasons are usually get ready prepared in every family during the Chinese New Year. So it's mainly carry symbolic meanings that relates good fortune and unity. They they call it like uh how tai hou uh how tai how means like oh, that brings luck. In in um they call it, uh Taiwanese they call uh Tai Tao means oh, like right. good fortunes. Right. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. So it's a must eat cake during the new year. Mm -hmm. So there are some ideas that in the future if you're visiting uh, like friends you can bring something good put some snack and fruits together. Mm -hmm. And Dumpling, one of the most impossible missed out food. Dumpling, anyone here know how to do the dumpling? <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah, I'll always fall apart. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so this festival wouldn't be complete without savoring this delightful dumpling. And this little pocket symbolizes wealth um, and prosperity. So in the shape is resembling ancient Chinese gold, gold, and the silver inbox. Mm -hmm. So eating them as if you are bringing hopes of prosperity and future year ahead. So there's must eat food, must eat snack, and that is a must go place, a must visit place. Where is it? Temple. So temple. Visiting the temple during this lunar period is important schedule for every Chinese or for mostly Asians. So it is for an individual to reflect on themselves, making new resolutions and be the best version for the next year. Mm -hmm. So often this is also the time where incense, lights, candles will be offered to pay respect to the triple gems and ancestors. And at this time, you will also see people rush and squeeze into a long queue to offer the very first thing, incense and lights. First thing, thinking it's a crucial to show their sincerity to the start at the start of the year. Then here's a little monk who has some wise words. For rush. On the first day of the Lunar New Year, many people will rush to the temple to offer their first incense of the year. This tradition is called the first incense rush. However, in Buddhism, this is not what the first incense means. Definitely not the meaning. <laughs> the Buddhist perspective of time is cyclical. There's no formal or latter, start and finish, or beginning and end. The so-called offering the first incense, sounding the first bell, and striking the first drum is the same reasoning. There is no first incense according to time. The first incense that you offer each year will always be your first incense. So there's no need for the first incense rush. 
Likewise, offering incense ahead of others does not make you as the first. How this? If we base the first incense on the first day of the Lunar New Year, then because of differences in time zones, our first incense will be two and a half hours of those in India. Ah, hmm. oh, why hasn't the time come yet? Huh? All in all, Buddhism is a religion that gives convenience. As long as our hearts are sincere, no matter the place or time, a sincere offering can be considered as offering the first incense. Ah, me, Tofu. Offering incense and paying respects to the Buddha cannot be done with a banal mind. What's important is having the Buddha in our hearts. Okay, although there's no first incense, but we still wish to see you at the very first day of the Lunar New Year. <laughs> All right, this is the end of my sharing, and I would like to hand this to Ben Wu Zixin for a session. Thanks for having me, and hope you enjoy my share. Thank you. Thank you. Before I start, do I need to do the call host? Okay. Let me find that. Okay, done. All right. So <laughs> after everybody could close this. Okay. All right. So after everybody rush into the temple during the first day of the lunar new year, what do we do? Do we just like hi and bye? No way, right? So the temple prepared a lot of events, cultural activities, and exhibition for those to accommodate everyone to come to the temple and enjoy the Lunar New Year. So, but this year in Shiva Temple, in the year of the dragon, we prepared for exhibitions in the temple and in this community room or the bookstore. So before we go into the exhibition, I'd like to share with everybody about why do we and how do we start with the exhibition. So the founder of the Shivan Temple, the Fogongshan, Venerable Master Xingyun, at his age of 20, at the year of 1946. He's still a novice, he's still a student in the Buddhist college. This Buddhist, this Buddhist college name, Jiao San Buddhist College. How can I, can I remove this thing? This is hard to see. Okay. The Jiao San Buddhist College. Is it okay? Okay. So at this Buddhist college, um, Venerable Master Xingyun attended when he was at the age of 20. So could you imagine this young adult at his age of 20? He started an exhibition. What kind of exhibition he started? It's about the Buddhist antiques exhibition. So what is 
the special, the attraction of this exhibition. One of the attraction is the jazz belt of this famous poet during the Song Dynasty. The poet name Su Shi. Su Shi. Why he? Why is he so famous? Not only because he is a poet, he is a painter, he used to be a writer and calligrapher, but also he has affinities with Buddhism. He used to have a lot of discussion with Buddhist monks, and his famous um, um, Chan, um, Kong An, is a like, kind of discussion between the, the monastic, between the um, Chan master. After the discussion, he moves his jet belt to the temple. So the, this jet belt has been like passing gener uh, generation to generation. And then coming to the year of 1946, he appeared again and showed up in this exhibition. So this exhibition has been attracted for a lot of people to come to this temple to visit the exhibition. So guess, make a guess, how many people attended this exhibition? 100? 500. 500. <laughs> to his surprise, there are 100,000 oh, people. <laughs> and so not only this jet belt, there are a lot of like, um, emperor shoes, emperor robes, and a lot of artifacts from um, ancient dynasties. So that's why there are 100,000 of people attended this exhibition. So you can see, um, as his memoir, he mentioned that um, the river, there are a lot of boats to transfer people from this shore to another shore to this temple. And there are, there are like more than 10 Boat, more than 10 boats to across the river and each and every day the boats are full. So there are more than 100,000 people attended the event. So this is the very beginning of the exhibition that our founder, Venerable Master Xingyun, he has organized during his age of 20. And then after that, at his age of 43, when he just like at the beginning of um, founding the Fogongshan Monastery, he had he built a, a room of um, collecting this Buddhist art in the room with some cabinet to store it. Why? Why he do, why would he do so? He mentioned that because he wanted the devotees or the visitors to become acquainted with Buddhist art in order to gain a clearer understanding of Buddhism and to appreciate their beauty. So to do exhibition is not just attract people to come to this place, but he wanted people to have a clearer understanding of Buddhism and also appreciate this Buddhist art. So for this year in Shiva Temple, we have four theme. We okay, have four exhibitions in this dragon theme. Under this dragon theme, first is cloud and water dragon. So the dragon is just out there. You can see there are lights over there. So it is a collaborator collaborative effort from um from our members. So why it is collaborative effort, I will show you later on. And the, the other dragon is in the main shrine. So um, come to the temple during the daytime. The main shrine will open for you. And then everyone is welcome. You can see that there are um, words. This is the New Year blessing from our, from our founder, Venerable Master. And also there are um, in English and the dragon and the lion over here. So from details, you can see that they are some cross and art on the body of the dragon and on the body of the um, little boy. 
So it is the collaborative of our temple members from the elderly and from the parent of the kids class and from this young adult, the youth and everyone, each and everyone from the temple, okay? And why collaborative effort is so important, okay? Because as um, mentioned by our founder, Madam said, um, why this so-called tree as cloud and water, okay? The dragon name is cloud and water. Why it has the name of cloud and water? It's because if we can be a cloud floating freely in the skies, and if we can be a water flowing gracefully and freely, we can eliminate a lot of conflict. So if we encourage us to try to be, to learn to be the cloud and the water. Whenever we face difficulties, whenever we face obstruction, do you see the cloud like being blocked by the, by the mountain? Have you ever seen the cloud being blocked by the mountain? Never, right? The cloud will go through the mountain or go above the mountain, right? So same as the water. Have you ever seen the water being blocked by a rock, the water will go around the rock, right? Or he will immerse the rock. So Venerable Master Xin Yun encourage us, remind us to learn to be a cloud, to learn to be a water, okay? And then the second exhibition is the carefree orchids. So I have um, a question to Ask, what is the difference between freedom or rights versus carefree? What do you think? Freedom and carefree. What are the difference? I think it's perspective. Mm -hmm. the, you know, freedom is the ability to be able to do certain things, mm -hmm. to wear, to speak, to present yourself in the way that you feel is uh, authentic to yourself. Mm -hmm. In carefree, the perception there is that maybe you don't care about others, you don't care about anything, you just maybe you just kind of flow and it's like whatever it is is you're just flowing. There isn't as much of a statement as it is towards freedom and rights, there's more of a purpose. Mm -hmm. That's one, that's what comes to mind right now first, without yeah. going deeper. Thank you, and Malika. So, yep. Yeah. Um, for me, when I read it, I see freedom and rights as being more of a political outlook versus carefree being more of a personal outlook. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you, yeah. yep, thank you. So, the carefree is more to the state of mind. Even though we're facing some kind of chaotic in the outside world, but the inner self still remain the state of calm, right? The freedom or the rights is some kind of against something from outside. It's something outside giving me the freedom. It's something outside giving me the right. But instead, the carefree is something I generated from the inner self, right? So this is the second exhibition that we have in the temple. So I hope everyone um, coming to the temple during the Lunar New Year, you could have um, have this kind of um, 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 inspired, okay? And the third is the auspicious mama. Mama in Buddhism is, um, is a, it's used to be praying. It's used to praying and practicing the Buddhist. So whenever we see the mala, we can remind ourselves, um, am I calm? Am I practicing the Buddhism? And the fourth is the joyful light goal. So the mala and the light goal 
will be here in the bookstore or the community room. So everyone is welcome. We are just putting in something more to the right, not yet have any description. So we are working on it. So welcome back during the Lunar New Year to be to enjoy this exhibition. So last but not least, I would like to emphasize this. Everyone wants to see your membership. Everyone is welcome to the temple during the Lunar New Year. Not just only looking at the Buddhist art for understanding the Buddhism and appreciate their beauty. The deer here is not just the artifact, it's not just the art itself, it's also the truth of Buddhism. Okay, so next I'll pass this to Venerable Young. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. 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 There's no way to. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. Okay. So. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now I would like to share the last part of our presentation tonight. It's a little bit more, a little bit about uh, the zodiac animals. Um, is everyone aware that uh, there are different animals like for each year, and it is a cycle of like twelve different different animals. So this is as according to the Chinese culture. Uh, Vietnamese still have a, a one animal that is different, okay? uh, which is uh, the rabbit uh, becomes the cat. Yeah, so, um, uh, but I'm not sure about other tradition. So uh, tonight when we share, it's mainly focusing on the Chinese culture. So even though I may mention a few the twelve zodiac animals, but I would like to bring out the Buddhist practice that relates to each of the characteristics of the animal. Okay. So the first one that you might know, um, yeah. So that is the rat. Okay. Anyone rat? <laughs> so um, I I have listed out like the years. Okay. So oh, what Verbal Master, uh, our founder, has mentioned that sometimes we can learn uh, from some of the characteristics. It doesn't mean that those of us who is born in the year red has this uh, characteristic or attitude or behavior. It doesn't equivalent. It. But is this part of the culture that we embrace? And then uh, for... The year red, um, usually red has uh, the, the character of like hermit, you know. Uh, when there are people around, the red won't come out. Okay, so it's just like hermit. Okay? But always looking for an opportunity when the lights off, the red is out. Okay, so uh, and it's, red is very organized and also treat friends like family. So this is like the characteristics of a uh, rat. A uh, verbal monster actually um, embrace the Chinese culture uh, of the year rat into the Buddhist practice. So starting uh, the year 1996, uh, verbal monster started writing uh, the New Year blessing for everyone, a okay? blessing, 1996. So it, it wasn't the year rat, okay? So we will see like what year was it. <laughs> but um, Master Xing Yun tried to encompass it, like embrace the Chinese culture with the practice. So in that year, uh, which is back in 2008, okay, so Verbal Master wishes everyone with prosperous future generation and harmonious conditions to all. Okay. Um, a, a rat has a characteristics of like very organized, so it refers to the future, future generation, because it's well planned, organized, and always um, uh, respectful in a way, uh, because uh, rats won't be coming out when there's people around. So that that kind of respect uh, comes in. So verbal monster tried to use the main 
characteristics that we can learn. Okay, this is the year right. Okay, anyone year right? Okay, anyone? <laughs> the year is right there. No, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, the second animal is ox. Okay, ox. Uh, anyone born in the year 13, 25, 19, 37, and so on and so forth, known to be tolerant, like ox has a, um, it's very diligent, you know, like a, like um, the cow, ox, or, um, yeah, it's always independent, reliable, and supportive of the people around them. So these are the characteristics of an ox. Okay. So Verbal Monster also wrote A New Year Blessing. Uh, this was uh, 2009, okay, the year after. So it started with rat. The second one is ox. So Verbal Monster wishes everyone earnest cultivation yields fruitful harvest. So this uh, describes the main characteristics of the cow, the ox, is diligent. Okay, it's like uh, with earnest cultivation. If we continue to cultivate uh, continuously, of course, one will use fruitful harvest. Okay, and then tiger is the third zodiac animal in the cycle. So known to be <laughs> ambitious, determined, warm-hearted and a potential leader and willing to speak up if one thinks something is not right. Okay, it has that um, 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 willingness to, to point out like, oh, this is something that we should change. This is something that we shouldn't do. Okay, so Tiger has that characteristics of ours to learn. So on that year, Verbal Monster wishes and everyone to have uh, you inspiring virtue in an ocean of prosperity. It is because of the, the year of tiger has all these virtues that we can learn from. So this is a blessing uh, from Verbal Monster to everyone in a year of tiger. Okay, That was back in 2010. Okay. Followed by rabbit bunny. Okay. Anyone bunny? Wow, okay. Known to be intelligent, calm, artistic, uh, pay close attention to small details and make sure everything is done correctly. Okay, so very detailed person, very intelligent, hopping here and there, <laughs> but still <laughs> remain calm. Okay, so uh, Verbal Master Xing Yun's blessing for that year is uh, wishing everyone to have skillful wisdom. Okay, not only smart, skillful wisdom, okay, and enlightened mind, okay, that describes the main characteristics of the bunny, the rabbit, okay, something that we can learn, and also the wishes for everyone in the year of rabbit. And the next one, do you know what is the next animal? Dragon, yes. <laughs> Dragon. So the year continues. So you see the last one is like 2012. You add 12 to it. So this year is 2024. So one cycle is 12 years. Okay. So uh, anyone born in year of dragon, uh, we can learn from the dragon in a way uh, to um, a person that is charismatic, intelligent, confident, powerful, and tends to do it to the best of the ability with high standards, it's like trying their best uh, with high standard. Okay. So this year, since that Verbal Jixing has mentioned, uh, this year theme, we we focus from focus on Verbal Master's blessing to everyone, is wishing everyone may you be free as cloud and water. There's no boundaries, like we just flow. Whenever there's ups and downs, we just flow with it and always be auspicious and joyful, okay? So this is the year of dragon, and it goes on. Ooh. Sometimes people are not so, um, you know, this is not very fun to many people, especially like, you know, I heard someone say, oh, snake. <laughs> but, 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 you know, it's just one of the, um, the, the zodiac animal. 
Okay, so um, anyone, um, snake, uh, even though I'm not sure if the snake can talk, but it is known for a great speaker, deep thinker, calm, and being able to navigate the twists and turns <laughs> in life. Just like, you know, snakes, it, it won't go straight. It won't walk like straight line. It just go with the twists and turns, but still moving forward. Okay. So that year, Rabbi Manshu's blessing to everyone is wishing everyone to have an unwavering advancement despite life's twists and turns leads to attainment of happiness and wisdom. So all these different zodiac animals, there are something to remind ourselves. And of course, with the well wishes from our founder, uh, when we start our year, we start our year with full confidence. Okay, so the um, seven is horse. Okay, horse. Oh well. Okay, we have one here. Known to be fast. Okay, energetic and dynamic nature. It symbolizes vitality, speed, and perseverance. Okay, so this is um again uh, we embrace the Chinese culture, but we sometimes that uh, we can learn uh, from the characteristics here. So Verbal Master's blessing is the noble steep gallops into the bright future. It's just like a horse moving forward into the bright future. Okay, so this was back in 2014, 10 years ago. And Verbal Master keep on writing all the wishes and all the blessings. And um, yeah, so the eighth animal is goat, or you can call it sheep or ram. So depending on how we refer to, okay. So anyone, she born this year? Wow, okay, wow, okay, a few. Known to be soft, creative, and being able to flow with the conditions. One might be shy and reserved, but one can stand up for oneself, okay. So it, it doesn't have the equivalent mark to who you are, but it's just, you know, again, the culture you can embrace. And Rebel Master's blessing for everyone on that year is to have auspicious beginnings of peace and harmony. It is because of the nature of a, a sheep of goat, which is very calm and soft. Okay, so also wishing everyone to have peace and harmony okay, right from the start of the year. Okay. The ninth monkey, okay, known to be agile, right? Agile. 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 Okay. Intelligent, well rounded, and fun. Okay. Monkey. It's not referring to the monkey mind that we have, though. <laughs> okay. And that year, uh, the, that was back in 2016, Verbal Master of bless, Blessing and also wishes to everyone in that year to be smart and agile. Okay. Just like the monkey. Okay. And the 10th, okay, Rooster. So we have all this year and it does add on um, coming soon. Okay, known to be punctual, hardworking, de dependable personality, <laughs> and paying attention to the details. <laughs> okay, so this, is, this is just F FYI. <laughs> Yeah, so um, in a year of rooster, Rebel Master's wishes and also blessings to everyone is, you know, rooster wake up early on time, like, you know, ooh, and then it's like <laughs> rising dawn of success. It's like we start from early, we start from morning, we start from the beginning of the year, we start from spring. Um, so this is the well wishes uh, on in a year of rooster, okay? And then 11, we're almost done, okay. <laughs> um, so the year of dog, okay, dog is known to be loyal, caring, reliable, and protective, just like our buddy buddy, uh, our fur babies, right? They have that characteristic. So here in San Diego, when we walk out, we can see all the fur babies, right? Because they're known to be loyal and caring and also reliable and always there for us and protect, protective, okay? So, the year of like a uh, dog, verbal monster wishes and boot. Everyone a family of legacy of loyalty and honor. It's within the family. 
that we foster uh, to be loyal to each other and also to be uh, the, the, the owner that grows generation after generation is just passed on, passed down. Okay, plus piggy. Okay, so anyone this year? Okay, no worries. Okay. Known to be caring, considerate, and kind, innocent, and one flows with the consistent conditions. Okay, there's a slight similarities with one of the animals. I don't remember which one. Okay, but is it? Yeah, could be. So, um, in the year of pig, um, Virgo monster wishes everyone always well rounded and auspicious because. Uh, piggy uh, is the last sort of animal in the cycle. Okay? It, it, it represents the completeness and, of course, the characteristics of like being kind, uh, caring, and considerate. Uh, that also brings us together, well-rounded together, okay? uh, well-rounded uh, personality. Uh, and, of course, it brings auspiciousness uh, among each other. Okay? So from a, a quick uh, recap of what we have shared today is when we celebrate a tradition, when we have a festival uh, like uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, here tonight we share about the Lunar New Year, this tradition is not just about fun. It's not just about food. It's not just about the red envelope or the gifts that you exchange or you have. But we have to understand the significance behind each celebration. Why do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Why do we celebrate Christmas? And why do we celebrate the Lunar New Year? Okay. So every everything that we do, uh, even though it has been passed down thousands of years, but we always remember the essence, the significance behind it. So for Lunar New Year, it's not just about celebration. It's about family. It's about reunion. It's about getting together. It is about the new beginning of the year. So that is the reason why it is also known for spring festival, the spring day, the spring time, the start. So that is the reason why our founder uh, wrote uh, blessings for everyone uh, as a well wishes for us to start the year. Okay, no matter what animal uh, that year it is, but we have our goal, our resolutions. Uh, even here at the temple, we have the dragon up here where you can write down your new year resolutions and new year wishes. Not only we wish, uh, we make effort in making it happen. Okay, so um, that concludes our sharing uh, tonight. Okay. So um, I know we we end on time, 8.30. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, one, maybe one quick comment or question. I'm not sure if we can answer the questions, but. <laughs> so um, anyone would like to um, do a quick comment or questions, feedbacks? Oh, yeah. uh, you, you use the, the laptop? You can just turn it around. Uh, okay, Venerable, I was wondering, um, I was in Cambodia and there was a festival going on at the time when I was there. Uh, it was, I think it was called the Water Festival. Mm -hmm. People were squirting water on each other. And, and anyway, my question is, is this the same thing? Is it a Buddhist celebration or something entirely different? Okay, thank you, Danny, for asking this question. I, I'm not the person to answer this question because I'm not aware of the the, the water festival. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about Cindy. Cindy, do you have any any? Yes, venerable. Um, Danny, it is uh, in the same theme. It's uh, it's the Cambodian New Year, and essentially, you know, we're welcoming the new. Um, horoscope to arrive and the blessing the water is a significance or symbol of blessing so somewhat the same 
just different culture. Thank you, thank you, Cindy. Okay, so um, I know because of the time, I don't want to take up uh, a lot of time. So uh, let us do a dedication of merit uh, for tonight's uh, sharing. I know. Oh, no, 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 that, that was a joke. <laughs> so if we can have everyone join your palms, um, may kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity pervade all worlds. May we cherish and build affinities to benefit all beings. May John, pure land, and precepts inspire equality and patience. May our humility and gratitude give rise to great thoughts. Thank you, everyone, Cindy. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us for our TBIF. Thank Buddha, it's Friday. And thank you, Venerable Miao Zhang, Venerable Miao Yi, and Venerable Zhe Qing for all your sharings and insightful. I am quite excited, very excited to welcome the Year of the Dragon. And I extend these invitations to all of you, to everyone, to come and celebrate the Lunar Celebration here at Xifang Temple or your local temples. Um, my last announcement is to share with everyone our next TBIF. Our next TBIF will be February 23rd. Uh, so Friday, same time, same place. Our guest speaker will be from Australia, Nantian Temple the land down under, and our guest speaker will be Venerable Melzi. So for now, uh, see you next month. Take care and be well. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Good night or good morning or <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> Depending on where you are. Yeah, okay.